So we're going to go about loom knitting a dragon hat and I'm doing this with a 44 peg loom but I will have it written out for the 36 peg loom as well and I'm going to kind of give you a general guide about how to do this. You can enlarge this, you can make it smaller and while this has complicated sections in it, it's where it's divided up. So. I've divided this loom into three sections and I'm working flat. And what you're going to do is you're going to divide it into four sections, which is easy. It's sections of 11. On the 36 peg loom, it's sections of 9. Well, 11 to here and 11 to here, you'll want to put a marker. And as you can see, I put a marker between those two pegs. That tells me there's a divider in here. Okay, when you have that marker, then you're going to leave the back open. And that divides the loom in half that direction. So what you're going to do is you're going to start off and you're going to do 15 rows. Yeah. Okay. And at this rate, what you're going to keep in mind, we're going a concept here. What you're going to do is you're going to e-wrap all the way over until just before this peg over here. But you're going to stop there. And we're going to do this hat a lot like you do. This is the bottom of the hat. Okay. And as the hat goes up, it'll go like a heel, which is the back of the head, back of the crown of the head. And then when we do the face, that's the front area of the face. So this whole thing's going to be flat, but when we sew it together, it's actually going to have shape. And so what you're going to do is you're going to e-wrap all the way around and stop just before that other marker on the other side. And you're going to do this on any loom that you divide up like this. So any loom, this is what you're doing. <coughs> okay. There's my marker. I'm stopping just before it right there. going to be working the back half of this section which means we're going to be working between this peg which is the back half and this peg which is the back half of your hat yeah the back half of your hat okay at this point you're just before that last marker you're going to wrap and turn and then you're going to e-wrap until just before the other marker peg on the other side I'm going to stop just before that marker right there. And you're not going to toss that wrap and turn pegger. You're going to leave that and toss all the loops over. And we're going to be doing a section like a heel, but it's working on a bigger scale. And this is going to be the back part of the crown of the head. So, we're, so far we're fairly easy on this hat. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to wrap and turn that peg right there and then you're going to go all the way over until just before the last wrap and turn. Okay, so we're going to stop just before the last wrap and turn. So there's the last wrap and turn. There's the peg we're going to wrap and turn next. 
And so we're going to stop there. And we're not going to toss this wrap and turn over here. So we're going to go and toss all the rest of them over. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to wrap it back all the way. Wrap and turn. And then go and wrap all the way back. Until just before the last wrap and turn. There's the last wrap and turn. There's your empty peg that you're going to wrap and turn next. Just go ahead and toss these loops over. For some reason it's giving me a little trouble. Okay. And you're going to keep going back and forth and wrap and turn until you're down to a certain number of single looped pegs in between your wrap and turn. And how you can guide that is with how narrow you want it to go in the back. Generally, I find, depending on the loom you're working with, it's going to be anywhere from, you're going to go down to either 10 or 12 it's going to be in there. This one's probably going to be down to mm, 14. Your 36 peg, I believe, is goes down to 10. And if you're doing anything smaller, like this one, if you know it's 44, if you're going for the 41. Or 40 peg loom or something along those lines you can you can do this as a general guide but you're in, you're want to you're going to want to have those loops in between anywhere from 10 to 14 depending on how many loops you have if you're working on like a preemie or baby size and you'll be doing that on like a 24 peg loom or a 29 peg loom then what you'll want to do um, is go in and do like eight. You go down to eight on those. So anywhere from 10 to 14 if you're doing regular sizes for child to adult. And then if you're doing a baby size, then you're going to be working with a smaller loom and it's going to be down to eight. So keep that in mind. Pause the video. Keep doing the wrap and turn until you have anywhere from 10 to 14 pegs with single loops on them. Okay, so what this should look like is you should have however many wrap and turns and they should be even on both sides. So I have four here and four here. And you'll find my yarn is right beside the last wrap and turn over here. And so I should have 14 pegs. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 with single loops. If you're working with a 36 peg, it's probably going to have 10 loops. But keep that in mind that it's going to be however many loops in between your wrap and turns on the back half. Okay, so... And it's generally anywhere from three to four wrap and turns. And while this doesn't seem like much, you don't want much. You just want it to have a nice curve and change of direction. So after you're back here, you're going to wrap this again. And you're going to wrap it all the way back and include the last wrap and turn on this side. So you're going to include the last wrap and turn and toss over. And 
And this is where we're going to start adding our wrap and turn pegs back in until we're back to every peg having a single loop. Okay, then you're going to wrap the peg that you just ended with and then go all the way back and add in the other wrap and turn. And there's your first wrap and turn on this side. Toss both loops over. And you're going to keep going back and forth until you're down to no more wrap and turns. And then you'll want to pause the video and complete that and then we'll go from there. And I'll show you the next technique. Go ahead and pause the video and add all the wrap and turns back in and then we'll go from there. Okay, we finished that and you can see we've already started a curvature right there. And I've stopped with my last wrap and turn and now I'm going to finish and go all the way back to my end right over here. Next we're going to be working on the spikes that are below the eyes. And depending on your loom, it's either going to be three pegs or four pegs in increments. On this one it's going to be a little odd, but on I'm splitting it up into four and four and three will be my last one. If you're doing the 36 peg and you want to know the example of the last one, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to do four. So what we're going to do is we're going to e-wrap four for two rows. So here's one, two, Then e-wrap three, then e-wrap two. four for two rows. Okay. Then you're going to put your original loops back, so move your working yarn forward. And you're going to take the previous peg and you're going to follow that back. And there's your loop to pick up and put back on. And then you're going to follow that and put that one on. And follow that. On, on, and then put that one on. Okay, and this is one spike right here, and they're not going to be real big. And there you can see the spike right there. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that one more time. Two rows. Now 
able to do the three increment which is going to be on your 36 peg loom on this last one to even it out but you're working in the section from here to here you're working in that 11 or 9 peg section to complete these spikes and so we're going to follow that back to here There. Okay, and now we're going to work three, and this is how it's going to work. You wrap three for two rows. There's row one and row two. Then you wrap two. You wrap one. You wrap two. You wrap three for two rows. And that's how you do the sections of three. Most likely you'll be doing the three section rather than the four. Bring it forward and put the uh, original loops back on. Okay. And you should have three spikes in here. There you go. You can kind of see it. There's your three spikes. At this point, you're going to e-wrap all the way to the other side, and then you're going to do the same thing in between those 11 or 9 pegs, and you're going to do the three spikes again. So go ahead and pause the video and go to the other side and complete the, sp the spike section in here, and then we'll move on from there. Okay. We've completed our spikes on this side. As you can see, one, two, three. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ear up all the way around and stop at the other halfway point. So we're going to ear up around. stop there. We're fixing to change colors to yellow. Okay. Now we're going to pick up our yellow and tie it onto the red, but I'm not going to cut the red. Okay. This next part is where it can get kind of technical. Okay, you're going to e-wrap all these until you get to over here. Stop. Toss the bottom loops over.
Okay. We're starting the eye section, and this is where I would say it's technically the most complicated. And so we've e wrapped over and we've tossed those loops over. And what we're going to do is, what you keep in mind is when you, no matter which loom you're on, you're going to e wrap all the way to your end point, and then you're going to e wrap half. And if it's an odd number, add the odd one up. So if it's 9, do 5, 11, do 6. Do six. But we're not going to toss any of these loops over. So what we're going to do is we're going to e wrap 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what you're doing is you're going to the halfway point of this section over here. Because that's where to keep in mind. So you're going to increase by 6. Then you're going to e wrap back all the way to your marker over here. And this is going to be your first row. So this is going to be row one. Try to make sure you don't toss any of those previous loops over. And I'll be honest, it can be a little bit of a challenge. And this is going to be row two. And I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what you're working with, it's three rows and internal decrease three rows internal decrease no matter which loom you're looking at that's how it works so once you get to row three which we're fixing to skip that first one and we're going to move the next one over so there's one move that one over move that You're going to do internal decrease on all the yellow. Try not to gather any of that red. As I said, this is the hardest part of the whole hat right here. It's the eye section. And on the end one, you can just pull it over one. Okay. At this rate, you're going to e-wrap every peg with a loop. On it. So, we're going to e-wrap those. Then you're going to toss the bottom loops over. Don't touch those previous loops 
or you'll mess everything up. Okay. And while this is a real kind of pain, it's the only way I've found to be able to do the eye area. Now, we want to bring our loops together so that we can do three more rows. So you're just going to pick up from the end and put them on the hook as a holding zone. Okay, and then you're just going to put them right back on the pegs right beside each other. Okay, and then you're working yarns over here, and we want to tighten those loops up. Okay, now we're going to e wrap three rows, so here's row one. and three. Okay, we're going to internal decrease again. So skip that first one and start moving those loops over. Every peg with loops on them. Toss both loops over. Pick up your loops to put them beside each other. And now you're going to tighten those loops up so that they're nice and snug. Okay, and then you're going to ear up three rows. And because of there being so few, you're going to pick up three of them, put one on there, one on there, Another internal decrease. And then you're going to ear up three. After you do this, so here's one. Your goal is to get down to one peg. And so we're going to put all these on one peg now. And we're going to ear wrap it. Toss all three loops over. 
sometimes they want to be a pain and then you wrap one toss over snip end pull through and this is your eye section right here So now that you've done that, you're going to pick back up your red and you're going to e wrap over to the other side. I don't like doing a lot of cut and add colors back if it isn't necessary. So I'm going to e wrap over to the other side like that and stop there and then change color to yellow and repeat exactly what we just did on the other side. And no matter what loom you're doing, you go halfway over when you increase to the other side, you do three rows, internal decrease, three rows, internal decrease, keep doing that until you get down to one peg and then you're going to pick back up your color and come back over. Now I'm going to attach my yellow on this side. And repeat the eye area where I e-wrap over to my starting point. Toss all my bottom loops over. Okay. Then you wrap over. Six, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this will be your first row. Continue with the concept we did on the other side with our eye here, and go ahead and finish the other eye section, and then we'll come back and start on the section where we're going to add the ridge above the eye and include the spikes that show up right behind the ridge of the eye area. So go ahead and pause the video and complete your eye section here and then we will move on to the next section. We're getting closer to done. Okay, so I finished my eye area right here. And now I'm going to e-wrap over all the way and increase back to my original end over here. But before I do, you'll want to set up markers. And the markers you want to set up is you find where your back half marker is over here, your first one on this side. You're going to add a marker here and a third peg over. You're going to overlap that with another marker and a third peg over. Another marker and a third peg over. And you're going to do that the same on the other side. And the reason being is this is showing you where your spikes will be, your next spike will be, after every four rows that you do. So when I do my first set of spikes, from that point on, you'll want to count in four rows and then do the next spike and then four rows and do the next set of spikes on both sides and that's a good way to help you guide through where you're at so after you do that you want to go ahead and just e-wrap all the way over back to your original end points we're going to start working on the ridge So you're going to e-wrap it all the way back to here. Okay, 
I'm going to go in and toss all my loops over. Okay, now I want you to keep in mind on the spikes, it's going to work this way on larger pegs and I mean the larger limbs and the smaller limbs. You start from there and you work three sections over overlapping the last peg of the previous spike. So at this point we're going to e-wrap 11 or 9 depending on which looms. We're going to e-wrap back to here. And this is the ridge above the eye. We're actually creating the front of the hat right now. And this is a huge chunk of the personality of the hat too. Okay, here's where your spike comes in. So the next three pegs, you're going to e-wrap three pegs for four rows. So here's row one, two, and three. four then two then one then two then three for four rows There's one, two, three, and four. Okay. You'll want to bring your original loops back and you know that you can follow that previous the previous peg follow it back and you pick up that first loop and put it back on the peg you do that. All three of those. Okay. At this point you're going to e-wrap over to your next section of your spike and you'll see it with your yellow markers or whatever marker you're using for those very end ones. So we're going to stop here because there's our yellow markers. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go ahead and toss over my loops. Okay, repeat the spike over here, you're up three for four rows, you're up two, you're up one, you're up two, you're up three for four rows, and bring your original loops back.
Okay, bring your original loops back. Okay, and then you're going to wrap over and that's a row. Now, we're going to wrap all the way around, just regular, nothing special. And then you're going to take and you're going to e-wrap another row regularly and this will be your second row so you know you'll have two more rows before you'll be doing the spike again. Okay, at this point we're going to start decreasing by one on each end on every row. So you're going to decrease by one on each side. And you're going to start doing this every row. So you're going to start decreasing one on each side for every single row. Now notice that this is the third row. And we'll have one more row and we'll do our next spike. Okay, and you're going to pick up and you're going to decrease by one on each side again. This is going to be your fourth row. So you're going to e-wrap all the way over and then on the next row we're going to do our next spike. going to decrease again on each side again that's what we're going to be doing for every single row until we are down to 10 8 or 6 pegs depending on the loom you're using so keep that in mind and this is a spike row so you will e-rep until you get just before your next spike markers. Let's go ahead and toss those loops over. Okay. And then you take the next three where your next spike markers are and do a rep four for th e rep three for four rows, e rep two, e rep one, 
you wrap three for four rows. Bring the original loops back up. Go over to the other side. Stop just before the next spike markers. Toss your bottom loops over. Repeat the spike, finish to the end, decrease on each side. Keep decreasing on each side for four rows. And then after you finish your four rows, find your next spike marker. Do the spikes on that row over here. And then you're going to continue to keep de decreasing until you're down to 10 on the 44, 8 on the 36, and six if you're doing the 24 peg loom for a baby. So go ahead and pause the video and complete your decreasing and your spikes all the way down to where you have those number of pegs left with loops on them. Let's go ahead and pause the video and complete. Okay, and as you can see, we've decreased and there's the three sections right there and I'm down to 10 pegs and now what I'm going to do is the bridge of the nose section and we're going to want to add some texture so what we're going to do is we're going to purl a row and then e-wrap a row and we're going to do that for a total of eight rows so we're going to purl I'm going to take that off. Okay, I've purled a row. Now I'm going to e wrap a row. And we're going to repeat these two rows three more times and when you're finished with that you're going to decrease for two rows and then decrease on each side for two rows so decrease and then decrease for two rows and then cast off what's left and then I will show you how to go about sewing up your dragon. So go ahead and finish up the hat and get it off the loom and we'll go from there. Okay, now it's time to go in and show how to put this whole hat together. And I've already gone in and done my spikes and my horns, which I provided a link with the pattern, the PDF pattern and you'll go in and you'll look at the video for that on how to make the spikes and the horns. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put those aside because those are the last finishing touches and we're going to look at our hat. And as you can see it's a flat piece and we're now going to give it dimension. So what we're going to do is we know that this is the nose area here. We're going to take this end and we're going to fold it down and back. And it should fold down and back all the way to that yellow. And what you want to do is sew it. so that when you're done sewing you can start attaching the yellow
bits and then just follow the yellow all the way down to which should be your edge like right there should be your edge so let's go ahead and do that so what you want to do is find that in right there and I'm going to stick the needle through right where that yellow is and I'm going to tie the end with that yellow and I'm going to show you one half of this and you'll repeat the same thing on the other half okay so fold that end all the way back to that point Okay, you want it to fold down as much as possible until it's a straight line, pretty much from there to there. And then you'll want to just go in and sew it up. Then what you can do is take and tie the end with your yellow here. You go ahead and tie that end because that's your midpoint right there. And you're going to tuck that in. Okay. And then you'll just line that up and sew that up. But I'm going to continue my line. And I'm coming down to that last pearl line right there. So now that I've got that, I'm going to go in and start sewing that in. And then I'm going to go in and tie that off. What you'll do is you'll go in and tuck all these ends in later. Now I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to sew that up at the base of that eye ridge. So go ahead and pause the video and sew that last bit at the base of the eye ridge and then repeat on the other side and then we'll go from there okay now I'm going to sew my spike on and as you can see you have the hat it kind of looks like a bug at this point and I know you'll notice some rolling up over here I'm gonna do me a crochet edge but um, if you don't feel comfortable doing a crochet edge when you start off doing your 16 you can do a row of e-wrap and a row of pearl and that should start to straighten it out some okay now I've went ahead and I've tucked my ends up here and I'm going to look for my center point approximately where my center point would be so there's my horns there's the column do, do, do. okay there's my center point right there count your columns in from these spikes here okay I'm gonna line it up with these inner spikes here and I'm going to start by sending it through and I'm going to follow the line between these two columns all the way back 
that's the wonderful thing about knitting is it'll give you an actual line to work on so go ahead and start sewing on your spike down the spine and you're just following that line there you may have to spread it a little bit to get your area that you're trying to add in and you're going to just sew that all the way down in the back after you've done that next will be to sew on your horns and your horns have a nice curve and so you want the curvature to be able to go back and up so you're going to put it in right here and where that's going to do is line you up with these back two spikes so you're going to put it in between the, the spine spikes and the two spikes over here and you're going to sew that in and you're going to do that on both sides once you do that you'll do a crochet edge all the way around to fix that roll and then you're going to find some eyes that you'd prefer and hot glue them in this area here after that you are done and that is your dragon hat